In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I welcome all of you uh, this weekend as we gather to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. And uh, I would just like to begin by, by welcoming uh, this weekend uh, a very special guest, uh, Deacon uh, Jake Makowitz, who is right behind me here. Uh, Deacon Jake uh, is, has studied at St. Augustine Seminary. He's currently uh, assisting at Blessed Sacrament Parish in Toronto with the pastor there, Father Larry Marcio. Jake was born in Germany. His parents uh, are Polish background and, uh, and residing, all of them are residing in California. Jake will be ordained a priest for the Diocese of Orange, Count, uh, Orange uh, Diocese in California on June 6th at Christ Church Cathedral. That was formerly the Crystal Cathedral. Interestingly, that diocese has, a, has two million Catholics, which, as you know, is similar uh, to the Diocese of Toronto in size. And Jake will offer the homily uh, today, so we're really delighted to have him. I also wish to recognize this weekend all the mothers of our community, grandmothers and mothers-to-be on this Mother's Day weekend. Obviously in this time of pandemic, people cannot gather as in past years. For those who normally attend Mass here, you will always know that I've always given out flowers, roses, uh, to the mothers present and grandmothers. However, today you and our thoughts and prayers and a special blessing will follow communion. In the meantime, I'll place the rose here at the altar, a red rose in memory of all the mothers, of course, and our deceased mothers. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we begin our celebration today, let us take a moment uh, to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the 
glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, brothers, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Ticholus, a convert of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles and prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your love be upon us as we place all our trust in you. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O oh, you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. With a ten-stringed lute, sing him praise. Lord, let your love be upon us as we place all our trust in you. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. Lord, let your love be upon us, as we place all our trust in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Lord, let your love be upon us as we place all our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to the Lord, a living stone, though rejected by human beings, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, 
See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do not know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Today we hear a part of the Gospel of John that's often referred to as the Upper Room Discourse. It takes place on the Thursday night just before Jesus' death, where he speaks his final words to the disciples before the Passion. And these final words of Jesus are not easy to digest. Earlier that week, Jesus had been welcomed into Jerusalem by large crowds as the Messiah, as the King of Kings, and now suddenly Jesus surprises his disciples with news of his forthcoming death. The disciples who were with him in this upper room must have been quite shocked and confused. And it's no wonder. 
They had been by his side for the past three years. They had come to believe in him, grown to love him. And now Jesus tells them that he's about to abandon them. More than that, he tells them that one of them will betray him and another will deny him. These men who had left their jobs and families to follow Jesus in the hope that he was the promised Messiah were now being told that he was leaving them and they cannot follow. So where was this promised messianic kingdom? And why would Jesus abandon them so soon? The disciples were troubled and understandably so. Things were not working out the way that they had planned, the way that they expected. They were also troubled because they had to face up to their own weaknesses. Some of the disciples would indeed abandon or deny Jesus at his crucifixion. And Jesus knew their weaknesses, just as he knows ours. We've all experienced setbacks and disappointments in our lives. And it's been especially true in the past couple of months with the pandemic that has profoundly affected all of us, that has shaken our future outlooks and wrecked havoc on our plans. Many of us have lost loved ones, lost jobs, lost businesses that we worked hard to build, families around the world struggling to make ends meet, and many losing hope that their lives will never get back to normal. My brother Deacons and I have personally experienced setbacks recently. This weekend, of course, was supposed to be a special and joyful occasion for the transitional Deacons of the Diocese of Toronto. We were all expecting to witness ordinations into the Order of the Presbyterate at St. Michael's Cathedral. Last night, we would have been celebrating and welcoming eight new priests into the diocese. But due to the pandemic, this ordination, along with many others, have now been postponed. But we deacons are certainly not al alone in our longing for the sacraments. Many of us have had to postpone weddings, baptisms, and confirmations. And of course, now many around the world have been going without the sacrament of the Eucharist for months. It's a painful time, it's a difficult time. But in the words of one of my brother transitional deacons, it's also a time for unity and solidarity. We've all heard those annoying ads on the radio saying, we're all in this together. But it's true, and it's reassuring to know that we really are all in this together. Now more than ever, all of us need a strong foundation in our lives. We realize that we can't rely on our careers and our future plans. We can only rely on Christ and his love that endures forever. We need that dependability now more than ever. So how does Jesus respond to these disappointed and frustrated disciples? He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. And then Jesus goes on to sum up the entirety of Scripture by saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus is telling the disciples to look beyond the immediate issues that are troubling their hearts. He's asking them to look at the big picture. He's asking them to look into the future, to conceptualize the vision that he has for them. His promise of peace reaches far beyond this life, into eternity. Jesus assures us that he left this earth and went to his Father's house in heaven to prepare a place for us. He gives us the remedy for our troubled hearts. Have faith in him. He has prepared a place for his disciples and for all of us through the cross. And he promised to come back and bring us to himself. It's easy to become afraid in these uneasy times and to worry about the future. And these are legitimate worries. But when we go back to Jesus, the source of life, we can't let ourselves get discouraged. God didn't call us to live in fear of death. He called us to live life sacrificially for the glory of his name. We need to keep firm on this foundation to keep living our lives to the fullest. As we heard in the first epistle of Peter, 
You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The result of trusting in Jesus is peace. Our hearts are no longer troubled and anxious. We may have sorrows, we may have uncertainties, but we also have the compassion and the power of Jesus to help us through. And knowing this should give us peace, hope, and strength. So let us look forward to being with him forever in heaven. Let us look onward to where all this is ultimately leading. So I would ask all of you here and all of you that are watching to please pray for us seminarians, deacons, priests, religious, and to pray for vocations especially. We, of course, are praying for all of you every day. And of course, I didn't forget today that we also celebrate another vocation that is perhaps the most important vocation of all. I am, of course, talking about Mother's Day. So I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. There would be no vocations to the priesthood without the vocation to motherhood. And so I will end this with this beautiful quote from the Holy Father. A society without mothers would be a dehumanized society. For mothers are always, even in the worst moments, witnesses of tenderness, dedication, and moral strength. Mothers often pass on the deepest sense of religious practice in a human being's life. The value of faith is inscribed in the first prayers, the first acts of devotion that a child learns. It's a message that believing mothers are able to pass on without much explanation. These come later, but the seed of faith in those early precious moments. Without mothers, not only would there be no new faithful, but the faith would lose a good part of its simple and profound warmth. And the church is mother. With all of this, she is our mother. We are not orphans, we have a mother. Our Lady, Mother Church, and our own mothers. We are children of the church, we are children of Our Lady, we are children of our own mothers. Dearest mothers, thank you for what you are in your families, and thank you for what you give to the church and to the world. Amen. I invite you now to join me as we offer our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, let us now commend to God the prayer of the faithful. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders and government officials, as they serve the people of God in this time of great need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the people of our parish and beyond, may the Lord's words, do not let your hearts be troubled, offer us comfort, strength, and consolation as we respond with ready hearts in service to the Lord and one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all impacted by the COVID-19 outbreak, for the health and safety of doctors, medical professionals, first responders, and all in the service industries who assist the greater community. As well, we pray for those working to secure an effective vac vaccine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. On this Mother's Day weekend, we pray for all mothers, 
grandmothers, and mothers-to-be. As well, we pray for all deceased mothers. May God grant them eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Mac Regis, Victor Williams, Ruth Lynn Samuda, Claudia Del Riccio, Connie Choi, and Antonio Joshua, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Dan Nicholson, Justin Melchidon, Federico Gaspar Jr., Father Basil O'Brien, and the following Jesuit priests, Father George O'Neill, Father Michael Hawkins, Father Norman Dodge, Father Francis Xavier Johnson, and Father Peter Lerzi, and for all who have died as a result of the COVID-19 virus. May God receive them into his eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the other Mass intentions of this weekend, for Joseph Young Fu, Maria Ki Sao Yan, Gabrielle Diugo, Pauline McDermott, Maria and Eduardo Fernandez, and also for the deceased members of the Emmanuel family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commend all of our prayers to your love and mercy, those we have spoken aloud, those that perhaps rest in our hearts. We offer them in faith, knowing you will answer them as you see fit and for our good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Let us pray. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truths, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. Edward, the Confessor, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. It's with you. It's with you. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite all of our parishioners and those who are, are watching today uh, via uh, our online mass to join me in the spiritual uh, communion prayer, act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. 
since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I would just like to take a moment um, on this Mother's Day weekend also to uh, once again uh, wish all the mothers of our community and beyond uh, our wonderful prayers and blessings and um, we're going to have um, a little um, blessing musically for you in just a moment by Evan, our cantor. And I just want to take a moment to, to bless you uh, in this time. And, uh, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'd like to also thank um, Deacon Jake uh, for his wonderful reflection today. Very, very wonderful and beautiful and consoling reflection. And please pray for him as he prepares for his ordination um, in Orange, California on uh, June 6th. And please pray that all will go well for him and his journey there. And uh, blessings also on his family. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. 
I invite you now to join me as we offer three Hail Marys, in particular for those who may die uh, in this coming week. We pray for them, their families, and for their eternal souls. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Christ our Lord. 